Hello and welcome to the video. This is an overview of what has changed on the version 2 of the TX16S. Now I first looked at the Radio Master radios back in I think it was May of 2020. So this is nearly two year old as a design. My version 1 that I still use and love dearly, this is kind of the super duper version. It's got the AG01 uh, gimbals on it. This is the one that I'm playing with. Sadly, they're still not uh, doing orange CNC pieces, which is what I really want. But apart from that, this is set up and working exactly the way that I want it to. So it's interesting they felt it was time to make some changes and some improvements to the radio and call it a version 2. Because if you've been waiting for two years, I suppose that's a reasonable amount of time. I know that's one of the things that Radio Master set out to do when they created the TX16S was to stick with a design that fundamentally wasn't going to be changed for quite a long time. And that helps with things like spares and maintenance and upgrades and things like software and firmware versions. So they kind of decided, I guess, that two years, it's time to bite the bullet. Now, Radio Master has kind of replaced FreeSky as the default choice, along with people like Jumper, for open source radios. But there's one big change on this radio from the ones they've done so far. Welcome to HTX. This is an Edge TX radio. Now, it will run OpenTX, and I don't think enough has been made about the fact that they've obviously decided that it's time to make the move. I happen to know that the people behind Radio Master are fans of the Edge TX project. I think the OpenTX project was getting a little bit long in the tooth and there's entire videos about what happened with OpenTX and what's going on with it right now. Edge TX is definitely the one that's getting all of the attention and passion from developers and implementing new things. And the setup on here isn't bad. There's an awful lot of the pieces here that you're going to need straight out the gate. It's actually shipping with Edge TX version 2.6, though this is pretty up to date. So let's go through the main changes, apart from the fact that we're now looking at an Edge TX radio. The radio itself is shipping with an SD card and all the files uh, on there are ready to rock and roll. So you don't need to worry about that. Underneath, there is the same two exposed UARTs and the USB port for charging and stuff as well. The other big difference here is that this is now shipping with a four in one module, which is what I have here, or ELRS. Now again, Radio Master are big fans of ELRS and historically being big pals of Team Black Sheep with a crossfire system selling the bundles. So it's interesting that they're going to go with ELRS and looks like they're doing special editions, something I'm not a particular fan of, but it is fun that we now have ELRS potentially built in. I would love a radio that had both of them built in and would leave the bay for something like Crossfire. That would mean that you could literally have the best of all worlds when you went to the field. Does this now mean that Radio Master will pull the trigger and certify their radio with the ELRS system inside, available for sale legally in places like US and the UK? I certainly hope so. That's one of the big barriers to ELRS in lots of territories. That's why most of the sellers that you come across are based out in China, where in places like the USA and the UK, it isn't compliant with the local legislation, so it can't be sold. Hopefully, this means that Radio Master will do the legwork and it will become an ELRS version of the radio that you can buy legally in those territories. There are new gimbals. These are based on the same chipset as the AG01 gimbals, although they look very, very different. Uh, from the original ones, they've got rid of the graduations, the white labeling on them. Uh, they do feel very nice. They're very, very smooth. And there is access here to both the travel and the tension as well from the front. Be aware that one of them is kind of flipped upside down if you're looking at a diagram and one of them doesn't make sense. That's the reason why. But I like the feel of these. I think they're a vast improvement over the basic gimbals to begin with. These AG01s were expensive. You're kind of almost talking the price of the radio just for the gimbals. So to have an upgrade to the gimbals, which provides better centering, better temperature, uh, resistance, all that kind of stuff is really nice to have straight out of the gate. 
there are much improved rotary controls. Now on the original radio, even with the fancy CNC stuff, the actual rotary controls, hopefully you can see that, actually wiggle about. Now that's not something that I've personally found a problem, but it doesn't make it feel high quality. The other thing as well is I hate these shoulder sliders. I don't think there's any other way we describe it. I love the ones that are on the FreeSky Tyrannus, the X9D and the X9D Plus. I think they are my favourite and these are just a bit meh. However, they have been improved on here. The rotary controls at the top are a lot more secure, they don't move, and they have a much harder central detent, which is great. Perfect for things like head tracking or managing things like maybe global variables inside HTX to handle things like gains and stuff. Really, really nice. It means you know exactly when you are in the middle. They've also changed the sliders. Unfortunately, they haven't changed the design. It's exactly the same design here on the shoulders. Uh, I definitely would love them to change this out or make this a modular piece you could do something with. But at the moment, uh, it's the same kind of travel. Central detent is a lot stiffer as well. However, the resolution of this encoder on here is vastly superior to on the version one. So if you are using it for something like head tracking or management of a control, it gives you much more granular control with this particular piece. Now inside the encoder itself is an awful lot bigger on this shoulder and also has a metal shaft which is going to make it a lot more resilient too. Really good improvements and welcome. Just wish it have changed those shoulder pieces to something a little bit more up my street. Some big changes on the back. Now the first thing you'll notice is that they have given you optional uh, pads to get rid of the lumps that have been there for a long time on the version one. These kind of finger grips at the top, I've actually got used to. I wasn't a fan of them when they first came out, but I've kind of got used to them. Taking them off and giving you the pads in the box, which gives you the option to replace them, they're really easy to pull off and pop back on, uh, make it an awful lot flatter. And it means that you have, if your hand sits there, if you're a pincher, then that isn't in the way and you have access to all of the normal controls. So that is um, a very welcome addition. It also means for things like mods, for additional triggers and things like that, uh, it gives you a little bit more room to work with and you can have a play. While we're on the talk of the back, there's a number of other things to mention here. Uh, there's a little port under this little piece here. Uh, this gives you access inside. There are an additional two soldered ports that you can connect things to that's actually on the motherboard inside this version 2 that weren't in the version 1. And this hole allows you to get the cables and bits and pieces in and out without drilling the case, which is a nice idea. There's also the headphone jack, which is now down here on the back, well out of the way of all of the antennas, which isn't a bad thing because there's an awful lot of RF and high frequency stuff going on around here. I do like the fact that they have moved this headphone jack around down here. I don't use headphones on my radio, but I know pilots who use things like a variometer, so they're listening to on a glider, it gaining and losing height. That's a really cute place to have it. The battery bay cover has changed. The original one could be a little bit tricky to get on and off. Uh, they've changed that. They now have this little piece at the top, which helps you get it open. And there's also this piece that you can pull against. It just makes it a little bit nicer to get open and closed. And there have been some additional sculpts as well to the back. So for example, on the side here, it's much easier to get to this cover because they kind of give you these little scalloped edges. On the original one, we haven't got those and that means that you have to kind of use your fingernail or the flat edge of something to get into it. It's very easy just with the meat of your finger to get in and be able to unsnap those pieces. And there is an, another kind of port or access in there um, that seems to have changed too. There's also some other little changes uh, on the bottom, which wasn't there originally, is now they have again another little uh, scoop cutout piece that allows you to get into here for the uh, external UARTs, the SD card and the USB charger. 
and then in terms of the controls on the front everything is pretty much the same the rotary encoder i think the wiring and the cabling is different from what i've seen um, the buttons here at the side work the same way they feel slightly more proud than on the version one so are easier to find I actually like them being a little bit further up i do wish that there was a screen printing or something for what they all did it would help with people who are new to the radio however once you've navigated your way around opener htx uh, 20 30 thousand times this becomes really obvious there is improved power circuitry for that power charging circuit at the bottom it has changed completely so now it's capable of charging up to 2.2 amps so if you have one of the high power usb chargers it will absolutely do that and that will dramatically cut down the time it takes to charge the batteries although however personally i'm still a fan of taking the batteries out of the radio to charge them anyway it's just an old habit dual speakers inside here also make it an awful lot louder however as you'll hear Welcome to HTX. the actual noise that you get out of the radio is relatively quiet Part of that is looking on the SD card is because they're using uh, very muted versions of the audio files. I would recommend if you get one of these, go to the HTX website, grab yourself the full volume versions that are uh, edited properly and replace them on the SD card. It'll make the radio an awful lot louder and you'll get the benefit of those two speakers, one of which is now on the back. So be careful of that when you crack the radio apart. So there are a couple of things on here that I am sad isn't a standard on the version 2. The main one being the fact that they haven't put a folding handle on the radio. The folding handle on the version 1 is absolutely necessary if you want to use one of the wonderful Radio Master cases that you can get. So unfortunately if you want to use one of those cases you are going to have to treat yourself to a separate folding handle. I think that should have been a standard thing. Hopefully the volumes of scale would have made it slightly cheaper for them too. It's nice to see a full set of Lua scripts on the radio and it does feel like a nicely rounded, well thought out version of HTX. However, it will be something that will be updated over the coming months as HTX itself continues to change and be updated. So if you're going to get a Radio Master TX16S, I guess this is the one you're going to get, the version 2 with all these extra additional pieces on it, with everything else being pretty much the same apart from the stuff that I've just talked about. Is it enough to warrant if you already have a version 1 getting a version 2? I think that's really hard to justify. And unless you are one of those people who always has to have the latest or greatest, I think the version 1 is still a fantastic radio. And this one has all my models on it. It's set up and every, all the tension's done. This is one that I'm going to continue to use for the moment. But if you were coming into a, a new buy or maybe your version 1 fell apart, then the version 2 is obviously the one you're going to want. Hopefully this will also mean that the version 1 might be discounted in resellers. So if you wanted to get yourself a bargain, those will be hanging about for a while. Personally, I hope they would have taken the opportunity to not only just change a few of the controls and a few of the PCBs to make it a version 2, I hoped they would have gone a little bit further and potentially give us a smaller, more compact radio rather than this quite bulky radio that we've had for quite a period of time. Without those pieces on the back, it does feel an awful lot smaller in the hand, but it's still about the same weight. Having a more smaller compact radio would be really handy for those of us that do an awful lot of traveling with our kit. So hopefully maybe we get something that's a little bit thinner, maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. That would be really welcome too. They're obviously thinking about new form factors with things like the Zorro. Again, link down below if you want to have a look at my review of that. But it would be nice if they'd have maybe thought about it. Maybe that is something that's coming. I really hope so. Because a smaller, more compact TX16S would be really good for smaller hands and travel. So hopefully that's been useful for those of you that have been interested in having a look at what has changed with this new version of the Mark II of the TX16S. If there are any particular questions that you'd like to know, please pop them down below and I'll do my best to try and answer them. I'll uh, ping the guys at Radio Master and try and answer all of them. If I get enough of them, I might do a follow-up video with a kind of FAQ that kind of answers all that stuff. 
But thanks for watching and hopefully that's been useful for you. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.